please join me in welcoming Dr. Wolf Seeger to the stage. Good morning, everybody. That's me. And that's you, waiting for the future talk by Wolf Siegert entering the stage. Are you real? Yes. She is real. Are you real? He is real. What about you? Are you real? Perhaps. Oh, what a nice challenge. Are you real? I think so, yes. Okay, everybody is real, I'm real, so we can start the show today on the 18th of October in Berlin. And because we don't have any formal representative from Berlin here, I allow myself to congratulate to be in my hometown, Berlin. Thank you very much for your presence and joining us in the future of VR. Now, what did I do? I followed another track. From the 21st of February this year, Mark Zuckerberg did the same kind of line with a totally different set. These people all there, you can see, they were all real, but their view was hidden by a mask. And Mark passing by, making fun of those guys and saying, they didn't see me here. So what's on? So today, in spite of all your challenges, in spite of you trying to be good, in spite of all your emphasis, I'm not going to speak about technology. I'm going to speak about us. So when I got a call from Maury, and he invited me to join the show, he was very courageous, because my mindset is different from technology. Although being, I've been involved in this world since more than 30 years, just digitizing the whole industry. But there are lots of ancestors who have been before me and who tried a big, big job in this iconic and semantic turn, starting with Gutenberg and going with Daguerre. And you see his first selfie down there or up there, right? He made it more than 100 years ago. Nothing new. And look at Edward Murbich. And you know what he did? He made the photos to run. But what happened to him is he went crazy. He had a big fall. And then he woke up only three days later after coma, and he had a double vision. So what did he do? All his photos he made were like this. And actually, he was the first guy making 3D more than 100 years ago. So nothing is new in this world. And the man who told us to develop stories out of this development was Carl Josef Jung. And he said, your vision will become clear only when you can look into your own heart, not into your glasses. You look outside dreams. Who looks inside awakes? Now take this not for granted. You will reflect on this phrase maybe two to five years later, what this has been explained to you before, because the film industry did a big, big profit in all this kind of ideas from Carl Gustav because he made up something which we call the archetypes. And the whole film industry is full of those. And the biggest American films, they took a big, big profit line on the European thinker. And here you see the best of it. And whoever wants the slides later on, you can copy them from there. These are my heroes for the moment because I'm as well the president of the Digital Cinema Society in Germany. We founded the society about 10 years ago after digitizing the whole in the cinema industry in Hollywood. And now these guys are making it work and I like to produce them to you because they may be some of the next ancestors who still are alive and doing good work. But, but when you look at the US film industry, what I call a dream factory, they are only part of the whole environment of what may become VR. Because this dream factory and the 200 years of US history 
has been a major part of the culture of this industry. In European minds, this is totally different. Our culture goes far beyond this kind of period. So when I speak about VR, I will not only speak about the future, but I will speak about the past of VR. And you will see there are some stunning moments from our culture. The only thing I'm not going to speak about is the third reference, China, Asia. I've been a long time in Japan as well. And when I was in China the first time, maybe you won't believe it, it was in 1976. I had the chance to meet many people, even in the hospitals. And at that moment, to speak about dreams in China was a disaster. If you dream in China at that time, it was an illness, and you went to hospital to get it cured. So again, you see a totally different perspective of what we call a dream in our technical life as well as in our culture. So look at these guys. They're all going to appear on stage the next couple of hours. And these guys presented all themselves with their glasses. Welcome them. This is us. You see Bruce, you see me up there. We are working glasses because we had the handicap view and we needed the glasses to survival. Totally different strategies. And in the end, you have all the majority of the speakers. Look at those guys. No glasses, nothing. They're just there, they smile. And they are happy because they can use all the VR. But we are missing many, many people. We don't have only very few women here on stage. We don't have any black people here on stage. We don't have here any people from Asia here on stage. We don't have any handicapped people here on stage. So do we really represent the people we want to work for? Let's think about that. I will just give you three hints, which may help well, not only to be successful, but to understand better the industry, at least in Europe. And I give you an example of Baggio Varona on 1500. Look what he did. Complete 3D. Why? He had a nice story to tell, which has become a religion. On the left-hand side, you see the angel coming down. On the right-hand side, you see a real person. And the real person is told that she's going to be pregnant. And she tells the angel, why? I have never seen a man having done that. And the angel said, I'm a virtual person, and you trust me, and it's going to become real. Think about that. Now, the interesting thing is that at the same moment, the painters this is Botticelli at about, I think, 1530. Up to that moment, they were not able to design anything in 3D on a 2D screen. Botticelli was one of the first people who was able to design a 3D environment, having this window looking out of the window into something else. Up to that moment, the painters in Europe we are not capable to give any outlook into the 3D world on a 2D screen. So if you want to go back, this has been 3D before the invention of 3D vision in 2D. So we have a lot of experience in making 3D. But let's have another look. Maybe you'll have a laugh at that one. Very simple thing, and we go take another five minutes on this simple thing. Look at the garments. They are red and blue. You know what these colors mean? Up to the end of my presentation, you will see nothing but the red and the blue. Very simple one. OK, three weeks from now, you will see the results. I'm not going to predict them. And I think nothing is going to be busted in the election anyway. But you need the red and the blue not just for conflict, but you need the red and the blue to unite something, to have 3D. Simple story, but great tale. Without reuniting the red and the blue, you won't have 3D. OK, another picture is like that. You have the same thing with your mouth and with your eyes. 
and the red is the eye. No, the red is your face. And you've seen Matrix? OK, that's Matrix. Again, the red and the blue. Who is going to take the red pill? Who wants to? Oh, yeah, who's going to take the red pill? There's one, two, three, four, five. OK, you know what it means. The red pill is going back to reality. OK, who is going to take the blue pill? Where are all the VR guys here? Come on, who's going to take the blue pill? Hey, 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 hey. OK, some, but not really. So all the people have not made their decision. OK, because it's a film, it's going to run anyway, so you don't have a make decision. In real life, you have to make this decision, whether you're going to take the red pill or the blue one. So be careful. If you want to learn how to do this decision, use this game. It's called Antichamber. I think it's from 2014. If you haven't tried it, try it. The same thing. You have the red flare styles and you have blue flare styles, and you just can use whatever you want. But you have to make a choice. If you don't make a choice, the game will not go on. So there will be more hands at the next show. In the end, the red and the blue reappeared in 1973 on a very simple page of the time. And the time is speaking about something called, and someone called Castor, uh, Carlos Castaneda. Now he is thinking about the Pyota plant. And the Pyota plant brings you to a VR world which has to do nothing with technology, but very, very powerful. So our experience in this VR world is not just technology. It's ourselves, and it's our ancestors, and it's our future. Look what we have here. Many men have been dreaming of this future, having a real pal on the VR environment next to himself in a virtual glass. You think that's the future? If you think so, enjoy it. I know the lady very well. We made lots of interviews, and he is, she is very, very keen in using technology to better exploit her capacities in this new world of male desires. And there will be very interesting results of that. I'm not going to prevail them for you. You have to talk to her yourself, because we have other people who did that before. One of these guys, I know Samuel Beckett, Krupp's last tape, he looked at the tapes, but he had a standard tape. You know what happened on this tape industry? Can you still recall when we had the big struggle of VHS, Betamax, and Video 2000? VHS has won the battle. You know why? Because the porn industry was behind them. The porn industry did the game and made the decision for VHS. And if you don't believe me, I'll give you the proof whenever you call me. OK? So I want to go, don't want to be too long here, because it's a keynote, but I will stay here tomorrow as well as in the afternoon, so you can talk to me and whatever we have to say. I just want to go back to what we have seen here on this nice little side. On the left hand side, the angel. On the left side of the picture. On the right side of the picture, the investor's angel. But this angel, he's a real person. And on the right hand side of the right side, you see the real person's being hidden by the glasses. On the right hand side of the left picture, you see the real person being hidden by the truth. I would like to continue like that for hours. I can't. So I just give you a very simple idea about our lives being short and going to be not just virtual, but maybe not even eternal in the analog life. But we're always working with this in Matrix. If you've seen, you see it's exactly the same picture. And not by chance they have designed this picture from the old one, which I showed you before. So I just make a wrap up. We are nearly done, folks. And then you go to real business stuff again, OK? So we just go back to the semantic turn with the Gutenberg. We go to the iconic turn with the pictures and the books. We go back to the iconic turn with the pictures and the camera. We go back to the digital film turn, which is another iconic turn, still on the same level. And then in the end, we go to what I call the iconic turn around. 
this is going to be the next chapter, and you will have many speakers going to speak about that, not me. I just will be here and stay with you. And actually, on this German quote, I met lots of, lots of, lots of writing and analysis. I'm not going to talk about this here. If you want to talk it, I'm more than happy to give you an extra seminar in any university you want to. I will only give you one quote from Lord Putnam. He was one of the famous film directors in UK, and he was asked at the IBC show this year, how can you really be successful when you do VR? And he gave a very simple, surprising answer, and he said, look, on VR, you can violate anybody at any moment, whenever you want. For me, a success in VR as a storyteller would be the fact that somebody goes sad and maybe somebody's going to cry. In Germany, we have a company called Crytek. I'm not speaking with these guys. I'm really going to speak about somebody who has got teardrops in his eyes, him or her. But you know what happens when you have these glasses on and your tears start pouring out? It's happened what Bruce told us. Go back to real. Take off the glasses and enjoy yourself in being happy or being sad and just stay with yourself and your friends. Because the thing is, we have to break down the wall. We're here in Berlin, we made it work. We had many courageous people without any technology who helped us breaking down this wall many years ago. Now it's up to you to break up a wall, which I may call the fourth wall, which is based on the laws and levels of technology. So, to end this whole talk, I should do something which I promised this guy I'm not going to do. I should drop this mic, right? Okay. What else can I do in order to do a nice exit after this presentation? I got an idea. The music you heard at the start actually was the juice hop jam we had in Berlin on the streets at Warschauer Straße. Very simple guys, very well professional presentation, no money involved, they just were great. So how can I do a good exit? I will tell you. I will take this mic, I will drop it down, give it to the next speaker who will follow me after the announcement, and I will use, I will use this moment to stop because sometimes you have to stop. You just have to reflect on yourself, on your friends, on your environment, on your initiative to be good, and maybe even about the money you want to earn with that. Good luck with that. So here you have all the sources. You can applaud, okay, go on, no problem. But there's something else I want to say. I want to say thank you. What I delivered here today as what you may call a keynote has been the collaboration of many, many friends from all kinds of different cultures, from India, from China, from the US, from Bolivia, from Europe, and some of my family as well. And I just want to say thank you in this way so that you can see them all and have them. And I'm going to leave you with this thing, real and I'm just going to vanish like this. <laughs>